2010, tech companies at the time were still in the process of becoming the behemoths they are today. Google, Amazon, Apple, and Facebook, the big four. They were known as being the faces of the exploding tech industry. But what they were really known for was how ridiculously difficult it was to get into the companies. Harvard has a 5% acceptance rate, but Google, 0.2%. But to the general public, it might not be clear as to how these companies interview and why they are so difficult. This is an example of an interview question asked at top tech companies. Imagine you have a row of buckets with the heights determined by a list of numbers. Let's say one day it rains. How much rainwater would be trapped in the buckets? At first, this question seems strange. Like what is being asked here? Then you break down what is being asked, solve the question in plain English, figure out how to write your answer in code, and then finally, optimize your answer until your interviewer is happy. This whole process can take 20 minutes to an hour, depending on the question and how fast you are. You'll likely get one to three of these every hour for four to six hours until you either fail or pass all of them. But the question is why? Why do companies use these questions to determine whether you're hireable? To get our answer, we have to go back into the roots of Silicon Valley. The way modern companies interview can be broadly attributed to one person. Hello, I'm Bill Gates. You see, before Bill Gates was a worldwide philanthropist, he spent his time running this little company called Microsoft, which dominated back in the 80s and the 90s. Microsoft was the face of the tech industry back then, and it was a company that people knew. If you worked there, you had a chance of making a ton of money. And so Microsoft could spend their time creating the most grueling interview processes to hire the smartest and best people possible. And who were the smartest people? According to Bill Gates himself, his greatest goal in the interview process was to find Bill clones, people who were just like him. And how do you find Bill clones? Well, in the case of Microsoft, you start by analyzing the man himself. Bill Gates apparently personally loved puzzles and brain teasers, and he was very hands-on in the interview process. But what are puzzles and brain teasers? Here are some examples. What does all the ice in a hockey rink weigh? How many gas stations are there in the United States? How would you weigh a jet plane without using scales? These are all questions designed to test the critical thinking process of candidates. There's no one correct answer. The interviewer is simply interested in seeing the thought process of the potential hire. At this point, you might ask, why didn't they just ask coding questions? The problem here was that they needed to interview both technical and non-technical people. So Microsoft needed a way. Questions that you could ask someone who knew how to code and someone who didn't know how to code. Questions that would filter out the analytical outside the box thinkers and puzzle questions were where they turned to. And of course, people put up with Microsoft's BS because everyone wanted to work for their company and make a ton of money. Bill Gates himself once said, IQ is all that matters. IQ itself being a test used to assess the cognitive abilities of a person on a scale with the average human scoring 100. AKA a test to determine, in theory, how smart you are. Over the years, massive flaws have been revealed in IQ tests because intelligence cannot simply be assessed by a single test. But were puzzle interviews IQ tests? It's hard to say for sure. But there are similarities between brain teaser questions and questions that were asked on IQ tests. And this is simply how Microsoft and the rest of the industry interviewed for decades. And as we'll see soon, the era of the puzzle interview was going to slowly die out. But we still see remnants of it, even to this day. In the late 90s to the early 2000s, we had another massive shift in how software companies interview. This was the era known as the dot-com bubble. As soon as I learned to type Amazon.com, I could get my way to uh, about 2,500,000 books, so it was remarkably easy. This was a time when investors would pour money into any company that was even remotely associated with the internet. Now, we're not gonna get into how the tech boom happened. What is important to know is that the tech giants we see today were forged from the ashes of the companies that burned during this time. By 2000, tech companies started collapsing left and right. And all that was left over were either the massive companies that could survive it or the new companies with groundbreaking products. You might've heard of one of them. The technology of Google at the time was truly groundbreaking. And with all the layoffs following the tech boom, Google was in a prime position 
to hire laid off engineers. Okay, okay, so what does this have to do with software interviews? Google and all the other companies growing at this time needed a way to hire the best and brightest engineers possible. Google loved to ask puzzle style questions in their interviews in the 2000s. Just like Microsoft and other tech companies used to ask, Google also asked data structure and algorithm coding interview questions during that time. Very similar to the types of questions we get in the modern software interview. But they were not the first to ask these types of questions. They had many similarities to puzzle interviews, where you had to clarify a vague prompt, discuss solutions and trade-offs with your interviewer, eventually come up with an algorithm for your solution. And we can infer here that companies, especially Google, were experimenting with both puzzles and these coding exercises. But for reasons we'll see soon, coding interviews had not yet become as difficult as they are today. Google apparently stopped asking puzzle questions altogether around 2010, after they were determined to be useless predictors of future success at the job. And many companies slowly followed their lead. But still in the mid to late 2000s, other rising tech companies still needed a way to find and collect talent. These companies all wanted the same thing as Google. Smart, young engineers that had great problem solving skills that you could put into any role. And so these companies were famous for asking the same kinds of questions that Google interviewed with, which leads into the rise of the software interview prep industry. In 2008, one of the most influential books in the modern interviewing era was released, Cracking the Coding Interview. This book truly did mark a massive shift in how people prepared for these interviews. There were books about this topic that came before this, but none of those were truly on the same level this one was. This was the first book to include hundreds of problems and solutions all in one place. And this book specifically broke down how each of the top tech companies interviewed. And of course, at the time, aspiring engineers wanted any way they could get ahead in the competition. And after this point, we had even more resources come out, the most famous of which being LeetCode in 2015. LeetCode was a site that automated the process of studying for these interviews. You could see a problem, code it on the site, analyze the right answer, analyze your efficiency, and get answers from other people in the community, all without leaving a single page. There was even a concept of levels, where questions on LeetCode would be labeled easy, medium, and hard. This was the birth of the LeetCode grind, where engineers go and do hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these questions in preparation for the grueling interview process. And over the next couple of years, interviewees had become so good at these kinds of questions that companies could no longer ask the truly fundamental questions. In the past, Questions like, how would you reverse a linked list? A question that you would find in almost every single textbook these days was about the level that you would be asked during an interview. But these days, a question that straightforward is completely banned at pretty much every single company's interview process. And to find the best and the smartest people, these companies had to continually ask harder and harder and harder questions in order to figure out who really was at the top of the pack. Companies kept needing to up their game with these questions, asking twists, combining concepts, becoming more granular with performance improvements, and expecting interviewees to finish two to three problems per hour. Remember how I mentioned that interview problems are divided into easy, medium, and hard questions? For a top tech company these days, it's common to be asked three easy questions, or two medium questions, or one hard question per one hour interview. This is a list of the software concepts that are the minimum prerequisite knowledge for interviews these days. And as software interviews became harder and harder, the interview prep industry became more and more and more fleshed out. These days, there are a million different tools, books, articles, YouTube videos, everything about solving these kinds of questions. And can you really blame the engineers for studying like this? Just as Microsoft back in the 80s could ask ridiculous puzzle style questions, so too can these companies ask the difficult algorithmic questions. With the rewards so great and companies only wanting to hire the best of the best talent and compensations exceeding $200,000 for a new graduate engineer, why wouldn't people get every ounce of help they could to get a leg up in their competition and get into one of these companies? This leads into something 
Very strange. If Google had determined that puzzles and brain teasers had no indication of future success at the company, why did Microsoft continue to ask these kinds of questions for decades? Were they just simply not keeping track of how well the engineers did? No. Of course, Microsoft was keeping track. But what happened to puzzle interviews was that it was an interview method that eventually became saturated. And at some point, it was just not a good indicator of future success anymore. People had become too good at answering questions like how many ping pong balls can you fit in an airplane? Or how many piano repairmen are there in New York? And once everyone knew how to do these questions, it failed to be a good interview technique. So now that we know how software interviews became so difficult and how puzzle interviews were phased out, where do we go from here? Have we reached that point with data structure and algorithm coding questions? It's very hard to say, but there does seem to be small shifts in the industry. Some companies have started to opt for the coding assessment style of interviewing, where you're told to build a project in a set amount of time and then assess by multiple rounds of engineers on the quality of your code. Maybe this is how interviews will slowly shift over time. There even are whole lists of companies out there that don't ask software engineering interview questions. But if that starts to become the norm, will these other questions start to become ridiculously difficult too? It's hard to say, but for now, if you want to get into Google or any top tech company, you're going to have to play the game.